Hey fam, it's Mariah, and welcome to Calvary Conversations, where we simplify God's word to reach today's culture by casting down arguments through real, radical testimonies and biblical conversations. Now let's get started. Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is David Catalano, and I'm going to be finishing up the last uh, part of our creation series um, about the fall. Um, I don't have uh, Mariah or uh, Carissa with me today, so I will finish this last part, and hopefully we can make this fun, easy, and I'm really aiming to be concise. So um, so today we're going to be talking about the fall. But with that, the biggest thing we're going to be addressing is the big E word, which is evolution, or more so the theory of evolution. And so evolution is the theory that if an environment changes, the traits that enhance survival in that environment will also gradually change or evolve. It's also known as the process by which new species or populations of living things develop from pre-existing forms through successive generations. Now, I want to differentiate those two definitions, okay? For those of you who don't know, the man that made Webster Dictionary was actually a Christian, and he used the dictionary to help people understand the Bible more. And so... Um, the first one, I believe, was from the Webster's Dictionary. Um, so let's talk about what we believe in regards to evolution, right? We agree in the aspect that if an environment changes, species may enhance survival by changing or adapting to the environment, right? So we believe it, it, there's actual observable evidence. We're not stupid to say, hey, Species may adapt. They may change their beak size. They may change their color. They may grow bigger, smaller, right? They can make certain adaptations to match an environment so that they survive better. We believe that. For example, uh, a donkey and a horse, right? A horse has adapted to a certain, a certain environment and a certain lifestyle, right? Whereas a donkey has adapted in a different way. Right, they both have ad adaptations, even though they are from the same kind. They both are different species in that they've adapted in different directions. So, what we disagree on is the idea of immutability. Now, the word immutability, I know it's a big word, but is the state of not changing or being unable to change. Right. So, the idea that we believe is that species can adapt and they can grow very far apart. You know, you look at all the dogs we have today, right? You have a Chihuahua and a Great Dane. They are the same kind of animal, but they're different species, right? They're on different sections of the DNA platform, okay? We believe that as Christians. We believe everything is according to its kind. And so the idea is that species can be very different and they can adapt to their environments, but we don't ever believe that one species of, or one kind of animal, like for example, we don't believe that a fish became a frog and then a frog became a lizard. We believe that the, in immutability, right? There are kinds of animals and these kinds of animals can't move into another kind of animal. So in simpler terms, this means that species have the liberty to adapt but not create a new kind of species, right? And when I say species, I mean kind of animal, right? We had dogs, there's thousands of different species, but you have canines, right? Which is the dog family, right? Which includes wolves, dogs, foxes, and you have felines, which is cats. We, we believe that you can't move from a canine to a feline, or you can't move from one kind of animal to another kind. And we see this in Genesis 124. It says, Then God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creatures according to its kind, cattle and creeping things and beasts of the earth, each according to its kind. And it was so. So again, this is the idea that every animal has to function according to its kind, which is really interesting. For example, I didn't know that dogs and foxes are actually of the same kind. They're both canines. And so a dog and a fox can mate together and have uh, offspring. They're called doxes. But you can never have a cat and a dog mate to make a hybrid because they're two different kinds of animals with very different distinct DNA pools. So what we believe as Christians is that everything is created according to its kind. That, that means that you know, you have canines, felines, equidae, which is like horses, mules, zebras, 
uh, bears. They're their own specific kind of animal. And each, and even geneticists agree that there's a genetic barrier, also genetic isolation, right, that keeps these creatures from ever being able to cross with another kind of animal. Like a bear and a cat can't ever cross species with each other. Now let's talk about what evolutionists believe, right? Evolutionists are against immutability. So they believe that all that kinds of animals have evolved from one kind to another. So again, the fish became a frog. The frog became a lizard, right? All the way to the idea that apes became humans. They believe that they believe beyond adaptation, right? And that genetically one species can create new DNA to become a completely different kind of animal. They believe this is done by something called natural selection. So you have a species, they mate together, they die, their offspring mates with another offspring, and so on and so on until you create so many different, uh, so much different DNA that it literally creates a new kind of animal through mutations. But as far as what we've been able to observe, this is not true due to, again, what we call genetic isolation and genetic barriers, right? DNAs have a specific DNA pool. So uh, an example I like to use the idea that you can have a fox that looks really similar to a cat, but it doesn't matter how similar these two different kinds of animals are. They can't ever mate with each other because their DNAs are distinctly different, just like apes and humans. We may have similarities to apes, right? We were created by the same creator, but that doesn't mean that we are, we, we came from them, right? And so let's talk about what the Bible says about this. So I want to say this. A lot of Christians try to justify evolution. They say, hey, we can believe in creation and evolution. But I believe the Bible is really clear that this is not the case. Again, we see Adam and Eve, uh, Adam naming all of the kinds of animals, right? But a lot of people say, oh, Adam and Eve is an allegory. It's not a real story. It's just a representative story. But we believe that the story of Adam and Eve and the, the account of uh, Genesis is a literal translation. That means we really believe that it happened. And I just want to say this. So in order for evolution to happen, there has to be death, right? Two species mate, they have offspring, they die. Then two species mate, they have offspring, and they die. But we see that death did not actually come into the world until sin entered in through Adam and Eve. We see this in Genesis 3. Um, right when when uh, there wasn't any death until God had to sacrifice the animals in order to cover Adam and Eve. We also see this in Romans five twelve. I'm going to read this from the New King James. It says, "Therefore, just as though uh, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, so we see death came through his sin, and thus death spread to all men because all sinned." And this is where we get to the point of the fall. I emphasize adaptation versus evolution because some people say, oh, microevolution. I used to say microevolution too, but then I said, no, I like the idea of adaptation more. And I'm going to explain that because I don't believe the world is evolving, especially when we read Genesis 3 and so on. Things adapt to environments, but overall, I believe that species and our earth is deteriorating, right? Um, that's actually, it goes along with something called the second, uh, the second law of thermodynamics, which is the law of entropy which says as one goes forward in time, the degree of disorder continues to increase, right? So the idea that, you know, living things are actually decreasing, right? There's so much more diseases than we have. Even though we have modern medicine and things to treat that, we have so much more bad bacteria and diseases and things that are, are fighting against to get people sick. And so in many ways, I believe, and this is what I believe the Bible says, is that the world is going into disorder, especially because we have decided to rebel against God in many different ways. With that being said, um, with that being said, you know, evolutionists believe that everything is growing in superiority, right? Everything's evolving. Humans are evolving. And again, I believe in adaptation. I believe that we are adapting in ways that are making us more efficient and different things like that. But I think overall, everything is decaying, right? I would agree. There are aspects of this earth that are fading away. The Bible even says, earth and heaven may fade away, but my word will never, will never fail, right? And so 
This is what's known as the fall. And the reason that this happened is because we rebelled against the creator, creator, right? When Adam sinned against the creator, Adam and Eve sinned against the creator. When they sinned against God, his presence, right, began to withdraw from man. And so we see this example in Genesis 6, 3, right? It says, then the Lord said, my spirit will not put up with humans for such a long time, for they are one, only mortal flesh. In the future, their normal lifespan will be no more than 120 years. So you see people used to live much longer in the biblical times, but, the, but God said, okay, I can't strive with them anymore. Their sin is becoming too great. Now I'm going to, uh, I'm going to pull away from them. Right? I'm not going to strive with them any longer. And you see, with that, man now began to live much, uh, much die much sooner. We also see this in the Genesis 11 account with the Babylon, right? Uh, the Tower of Babylon. So they build this Tower of Babylon thinking, oh, we're going to be famous. We're going to be amazing and rebellion to God. And so God allowed it to be destroyed and allowed confusion and disorder because he said, hey, you know, if you guys are trying to you know, be stronger than me and, and trying to not rely on me and do things in your own strength, I'm going to give you over to confusion. I'm going to allow even more disorder because only in God can we find order. And so that goes to my next point. Why is it important? Why is it important that we don't look at evolution, but we begin to understand this idea of the order that God created everything to be, right? And I wanted to say the several main principles, right? Why is it important that we understand that each of us were created according to our own kind and not this idea that everything evolved from one, you know, from one little organism that split into two and continued to grow? Well, number one, I want to emphasize that we are created in the image of God and not from apes, right? So if we believe in evolution, that means that we have to believe that we came from apes, that we were once apes. And with that, that means... Uh, you know, that we're not human life, right? That there's nothing special between us. It just means that we're the highest thing on the evolutionary food chain, right? But the idea is that every human life is an image bearer of God and has the right to life. So the idea that God created us in his image is so important because it makes the value of every human life important and equal. It says a human life is a human life. And I love that. It says in Genesis 9, 6, if anyone takes a human life, that person's life will also be taken by humans' hands. For God made human beings in his own image. We are image bearers of God. And that means that God has placed a value in our life that we should not be trying to kill other people's lives that are innocent. The second point I want to say is all humans are of the same kind, meaning one group of humans is not more evolved or more valuable than another. There's actually, there are evolutionists that say there are certain races of people and there are certain people that are not as evolved as other people. And that's where as a Christian, I stand against that. And I say that is unbiblical. It doesn't matter what race or what shape or what disabilities you have. We are all created in the image of God and we are all of the same kind. We are all part of the same race, which is the human race. One person didn't evolve more than another or anything like that. Maybe we're all adapting in different ways, but we are all of the same race. And I, I, I love this. It's the idea that it doesn't matter if you're disabled, what color you are, what shape you are, or even if you just feel like an outcast. I love this Bible verse. We were all created for God's purpose. And Ephesians 2.10 says this well. Ephesians 2.10, it says, For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. So we are God's masterpiece, and he has a purpose for everyone that calls on him, right? And I want to talk about the third and final point. It says, There was a fall, and now the wages of sin is death. This world is falling and we need a savior, right? So evolution just kind of says, hey, death has always existed. You know, it's always been, you know, one thing evolving and humans are just another step before we begin the next evolutionary animal. They're, they're, they, uh, a lot of people have been saying that humans are going to evolve into certain creatures, right? And things like that. Whereas Christians, we say, no, God created humans as an image bearer of him and that there's only the human race, and I believe that God's going to come back for us one day, especially for those who believe in him. But this idea that, hey, we are the human race. We are image bearers of God. There's not going to be some next evolutionary person. And I just want to read this in Romans 3.23. And this is the idea that, you know, 
because of death, death entered in when Adam sinned, right? And because of that, this world is decaying. This world is going to decay. I think a lot of people believe that, right? A lot of people see that this world has many things that are falling apart, right? The world's not going to last forever. Even, even scientists agree that. And it says, for everyone has sinned, Romans 3, 23 through 25, for everyone has sinned, we all fall short of God's glorious standard, right? So this idea that we all are part of this decay. When Adam and Eve sinned, they brought decay into this world and everyone born into that since has been decaying, right? Creation was perfect. It had order. There was no decay, right? There was no animals dying. There was no death, right? There was no evolution, right? But then when decay entered the world through sin, then things began to fall apart, right? Man began to live only 120 years, right? People began to die from sickness and all of these things, right? That's what the world we live in now. It says, for everyone has sinned, we all fall short of the glorious standard of God. Yet God in his grace freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Jesus Christ when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. This sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in past times, uh, in times past. And so what that's saying is, even though we live in a decaying world, God Almighty, creator of the universe, despite our rebellion, sent his one and only son that we could be saved from decay. And that doesn't mean on earth. Now, I do believe God does heal us and he can save us from uh, decay on earth in many ways, right? But I believe all of us are going to die one day or God's going to come back for us. But the idea is this earth is decaying and there is a life beyond this earth. This is this life on this earth is just a fragment of our time. And if we believe what the Bible says, there's going to be a place that we're going to go after we die. That's either going to be in heaven, which is going to be with, uh, with God and his presence forever, right? And if you don't want to be in God's presence, the alternate is to be apart from him. And if you're apart from the God of order and peace and love, you're going to be in eternal darkness. And you're going to be in a place that is painful because God is, you know, it's going to be a place of decay because God is the maintainer of order and beauty. And if you don't want to be in his presence and believe in him, you're going to one day have to face not ever seeing him in hell. That's why I emphasize, if you're struggling and questioning, saying, I don't know if there really is a God, you have to understand that if you're willing to take the leap of faith to say there isn't a God, and you find out that there is a God, that's going to be a terrifying thing. Because it says in the Bible, I believe that the reason people are weeping and having gnashing of teeth it's because they're going to know that they denied. Knowing there is a creator, they denied through all those invisible qualities, through the love of Christ and the pursuance of God. It says he enlightens himself to all men. Nobody will be without excuse. And that's where my heart really hurts for all of you watching this. That maybe don't believe in God or haven't accepted Christ in your heart. I don't want to see anyone miss the beauty of the perfect creator in his presence and the beauty of being with him forever. So with that, thank you guys for watching. So if you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. If you'd like to listen uh, wherever you get your podcasts, just type in Calvary Conversations. You can also follow us on Instagram uh, for our behind the scenes at Calvary Conversations. Also, this is a listener-supported podcast. So if you would like to donate to the podcast, you can do so by going to the description below and clicking Donate. Thank you guys so much for listening and God bless.